Wow, Dino's making another Animal Crossing New Horizons video. Was 44 minutes not enough? Well, no, I could genuinely talk about this game forever. And re-watching my New Horizons video essay, I realised something. I never really offered much solutions. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm very proud of this video. It is one of my favourite videos I've ever done. I just don't think I gave any suggestions to the problems I brought up. And only a few days ago, the game turned four years old. A perfect age to start criticising it to hell. So let me use this video to do just that. If you haven't watched my last New Horizons video, it's not required to watch this one. But a lot of issues I brought up, I also bring up here. So if you like Animal Crossing videos, check it out. Now let's envision a better New Horizons. My main problem with the story in New Horizons was how it exists. Animal Crossing is one of those series where you make your own fun. Like the little dialogues with your local villagers and helping them in very repetitive but fun ways. In fact, every Animal Crossing game has a story and it revolves around you. After all, you are the new guy moving into a charming little town. But that's about as far as it goes. Each NPC has their own lore and personalities, but there's never any overarching story in any of these games. New Horizons obviously changed that, building a story out of the new premise the game takes. It's the first game in the series where you don't move into a pre-established town, and I actually do think this was a good decision to spice things up a little bit. It has its pros, it has its cons, but I honestly don't mind the idea. Maybe it would have been a better idea to already have your two starter villagers arrive a few days before you do. That way it sort of has the old game feeling while still mostly being abandoned. Anyway, as for the overarching story and plot in this game, I don't think it's terrible, but as I've said, the problems arise when it ends. Your main goal is to glow up and change it from a boring green circle into an interesting green circle. And to fully make your island popular, your objective is to design your town and transform it into a beautiful little place to live. Only then will the amazing KK Slider perform on your island and you'll get a great song and dance with him, but then... It ends. The big problem with the story in Animal Crossing is the pacing. You see, I've seen a lot of people say that the 2020 pandemic is the only reason why people got burned out of this game so quickly. I think it was a factor, but I don't think this is the case. The biggest factor is the way the game treats the story. New Horizons story is paced in such a way that you are constantly given objectives to do when you start the game. You build the shop, then you unlock the campsite, and then you unlock Isabel, and then you have to build the furniture for the homes, so and then you have to gather more materials on Nook Islands, and then you have to pay off your house loan while doing that, and then you have to unlock the pole and the, the ladder, to jump over a river and then you plant more flowers. This all happens in like the one day. This game is so good when it starts because you're constantly given reasons to keep playing. Like constant reward for all your hard work. And while some things still take a day to wait for, there's always another thing you can be doing instead. This is, in theory, a good idea. More stuff to do means more time you invest into the game. Now tell me this. When was the last time you felt inspired to gather materials? Be honest, if your answer was March of 2020, you're wrong because it was never. You got these materials because the game threw so many new crafting recipes at you that you had to gather materials. I got so scared that I'd run out of materials at the start of the game, I had like 5,000 pieces of wood in storage for emergency situations and all. But all of this is why the story is the reason for your burnout. Because you do all of these things to progress the story and to see KK Slider, but once he's there, you run out of things to do. Tom doesn't give you ideas on stuff to do. Isabel is always telling you your town is majestic and beautiful and near perfect. You've already likely built everything from the DI recipes you want except for the ironwood kitchenette. Aside from the paths and the terraforming, you really don't get instructed to do anything anymore. It's all up to you. But that also means 
you don't get rewarded for doing anything anymore. From here, the game expects you to make your own fun, by constantly breaking your tools, making villagers dull as nails to talk to, and by expecting you to pay hundreds of thousands to renovate Harv's Island. Okay, you technically get rewarded for investing in Harv's Island, but when that's done, it's the most dreary, uninspired place on the planet. Have you ever heard somebody say, Guys, I can't wait to go to Harv's Island. If so, leave them. They are an alien. So how would I fix this story? It's tough, but here's an idea. Keep the beginning mostly the same, but instead of having K.K. Slider be the person to visit the island, have it instead be Gracie Grace. Here's what I'm thinking. Gracie Grace is the most popular posh bastard in the Seven Seas. She serves, she slays, and she struggles walking through doorways. In the Animal Crossing series, she is often shown as the pinnacle of style, the biggest celebrity in the game. She opens her store Gracie Grace in New Leaf, which has the most expensive items in the game, and she has a pretty large store in the center of the city in City Folk. She's like Mr. Monopoly if he were a giraffe. Since she's the definition of greatness, so many new opportunities should open up when she comes to your island. For example, opening new shops and expanding on already built ones. Through more people knowing about your island, the shops begin earning more bells. So Nook's Cranny will get expanded and the Able Sisters will see Label have her own little section of the shop. Over the course of a few days, Gracie will visit your island and propose building new shops, or also just give you the option to sending them to Har's Island if you want and have no space. They can be transferred back and forth as many times as the player desires, I think that would make sense. Terraforming land and rivers also becomes unlocked here like it does already, however paths should be given to you much earlier to make it easier to lay out your town. I know a lot of people when they bought this game, they just wanted to go straight to the terraforming and straight to the paths which is why they like rush through a lot of it. Each new shop owner also runs into problems opening and running their stores and this could be the best way to keep the player motivated to play. The cafe for example could need extra staff each day so you can get your job there. Leaf may need extra sticks or weeds to stock up on their store. The rewards you get for helping the NPCs run their stores could be financial or maybe a free purchase or an Anukma's ticket, really anything. And the more you help out the bigger of a bond you grow with these NPCs who will eventually give you free gifts, DIY recipes, dish recipes, etc etc. Make the NPCs feel more like they are part of the community. When their shops close, let them wander around town or sweep outside their shops or something. Timmy and Tommy at the start of the game have a little bit of personality, but then when Nook's Cranny is built, they lose it. They just become robots inside of Nook's Cranny. I think this improves the story of the game because it really emphasizes how you've turned this island from a green wasteland to a community of fun, friendly people. The only way you can feel this in the current game is through your own fun. You realize that you've done so much, but aside from personal satisfaction, you get nothing for sinking hours into this game. And to further help fix this, let's talk about villagers. The villager personalities are among the biggest complaints about New Horizons. Rather, the lack of them. Now this game does have some good lines and it's great when you spend a few hours with them, but after a while these villagers get stale. They do that in every Animal Crossing game, but the problem here is that they don't have any personality to begin with. I think there's two big reasons why it feels like this. The one I mentioned in my video was that every villager, no matter their personality type, will adore you instantly. There's no satisfaction when you talk to a villager you like, and there's no satisfaction when you talk to a villager you dislike. They're going to be nice to you, no matter what. You mostly just keep them around for their looks and nothing else. I don't think we all want the villagers to be mean again, but when I played the original GameCube Animal Crossing, I really loved the balance the game had with its characters. Cranky villagers were actually cranky and gave out to me. Lazy villagers were often greedy. Jock villagers were constantly calling me a wimp and saying I was weak and saying that my parents never loved me. After I cried for 10 minutes, I loved it. The villagers are just overly friendly. To fix this, just give them a bit more attitude. At least starting off. Over time, when you begin to earn their trust, that's when they begin becoming friendly to you. And if you hit them with nets or something, 
Really let them go at you, not just, oh, you hit me, you broke my trust. Let them threaten to tell Isabel or Tom Nook. Let them threaten to throw a tomato at your house or something. Let them threaten to rob you. Who cares? They are cranky villagers. Let them crank. The second big thing that I didn't mention in my last video were the actual things you do with villagers. Now, this is more about a lack of potential rather than removing something from a previous game, but why is there no option to do cool mini games with your villagers? The last up. The last? The last update introduced community yoga, which was alright, but I'm thinking more on the lines of competitive little games. Like, one thing they did remove was hide and seek, which I pointed out in my New Leaf video. Like, hide and seek would have been such a good idea here because it's your island. You know what, like the back of your round spherical hand. I get that there might be problems where villagers may not have places to hide, or might get stuck behind houses or something like that, but there's definitely a way to program this game in here to make it a proper good time and to not have it be a glitchy mess. Stuff like fishing tourneys used to be these grand occasions where you'd stand top of the podium if you won. Well that's replaced with a point system where you fish to collect points that you use to get prizes and trophies. Notice anything different about that? The villagers are completely gone out of these tourneys. You just see them fish now, that's all there is to it. It's no longer a community competition, it's now a single player mode where you have to grind on your own to win a trophy that doesn't feel earned because you buy it. To fix this, keep the point system as it is, but don't let us buy anything with them. Let us rack up points. Maybe getting a lot of points in a single turn will net you those items instead of buying them. Create a leaderboard that shows all of the villagers' points totals so you can see what you have to beat. One small thing that always bugged everyone was the fact that there's only 8 personality types, but 10 spots for villagers to move in. So at least one must be repeated. I mentioned this in my last video. It basically makes the villagers of the same personality carbon copies. Everything they say, they say in unison. It's like talking to the same person, but they have amnesia. And they were once a frog, but now they're a pig. Like, 10 villagers in a town is plenty, but they need to make two new personalities. If I had to come up with some on the spot, uh, let, like, uh, let's see, edgy, edgy villager type, and adventurous villager type. Edgy can be like all brooding and enjoy tales about like knives and vampires or whatever. And adventurous can be all daring and maybe even could be the only personality type that could use ladders and vaulting poles. Speaking of, the villager types should definitely show off more of their behavior through action rather than design or words. Like, have the cranky villagers be the only ones to read newspapers or fall asleep constantly. Have lazy villagers cook at resident services or have picnics. Have jocks do daily jogging around your island. New Horizons took a step at doing this, but every villager can fall asleep. Every villager can sing. Every villager can read a book. I think making some actions personality specific would be a good idea to enhance their personalities. If you've seen my last New Horizons video, you know I have beef with DIY recipes. Firstly, and I think this is an obvious one, but the game should have a protection from giving us the same DIY recipes over and over again. I swear around half of the DIY recipes I've picked up during my time playing have been repeats, and that's a shame because this is the biggest new thing added to the game. There are 924 recipes in this game. That's nearly a thousand for all you numbers fans out there. Most are DIY, and around a hundred or so are food. Now, I enjoy how you unlock some of the food DIYs. You basically have to catch the fish that is included in the dish and that's how you discover to make the dish with the fish. However, a lot of the food recipes are gotten from either a message in a bottle which has like a 1 in 9 chance of being a food recipe, talking to villagers who are cooking, or, and this is the worst part, by flying all the way to the Paradise Island which is the DLC island, walking into the restaurant that you have to build, walking to the kitchen, asking the main chef for a recipe each day and leaving. What? That's like 90% traveling and 10% dialogue boxes. That's how you get the food? That is the easiest way to get the food recipes. I genuinely can't believe that. It's, it's pay to win. Like, that is unbelievable. I have a few ideas on how to fix this and the DIY recipe problem. Firstly, messages and bottles should not give you repeats. The game should give you a new recipe every time. Oh, but Dino, that means you'll fill out your recipes in like a year and a half and most. That's no good. 
Well, firstly, a year and a half is a long time to collect fake cards. And secondly, getting the recipes should not be a tedious part of this game. It should not be the tedious part about the DIY recipes. Getting the materials is what that's for. Or finding out where to put them or giving them to villagers. That's the part of the game that it should be tedious. Speaking of the materials, I think bringing back gems is a good idea. And I think I know a good way to do that. Mr. Rossetti and Don work in a mine. Yep, Rossetti realized that yelling at kids in video games was not a healthy way to spend his life and decided mining for gemstones would be a better career choice. Yeah, they're kind of 50-50 if you ask me. Don could run a stand at Harv's Island or maybe even under a manhole cover like New Leaf has them in. Here, Don will offer you gems or other materials in exchange for chores and errands. Bringing something to Blathers to inspect it, or bringing dirty clothes to Mabel and Sable, or buying them an icy cold drink from Brewster's Cafe. Small things that get you more involved with island life. After a while, Don would even start selling you DIY recipes, but here the DIY recipes include ones you've already gotten, with stock rotating each day. Another idea I had would be an extra rock next to his shop that Don lets you crack open each day for some materials. You do need to complete his chore first though, and each time you crack it open you'll need to cough up a thousand bells or so, but the rewards can be handsome like fossils, stacks of materials, and very rarely gold nuggets and gems. As for the function of these gems, well, they're shiny. Who doesn't want a shiny rock? Okay, but genuinely, these gems have a great use. They repair your tools. Yes, if this game is so adamant about tools breaking, even though I prefer they didn't, fusing a gem with your tool will make it last way longer, like five times, ten times longer than usual. It should do that. Not only that, but depending on the gem you fuse, your tool will change to that specific color. Oh yeah, and I think the tools should have an indicator telling you when they break. Obviously. Yeah, I said it. I said it, Miyamoto. Come at me, Reggie. See what you- what, what, what are you gonna do, huh? What are you gonna do? However, customization is another thing completely. I think this game does a great job at allowing you creative freedom, but at the same time, there is a lot that holds this back. Like Happy Home Paradise has these little stairs from the beach to the land. Why couldn't we have this type of thing on our islands? Like Nintendo have to get around this like creative freedom by actually, you know, developing new stuff for their DLC island. Why can't that be for us? Another thing is the paths. You may have noticed in the background footage I've mostly been doing up the paths in my town. And the reason is, I mean, look. The in-game paths are so plastic looking, they're so boring. The custom design paths that try and replicate the older game style look a million times better. And this was done by a person in the community of the game, not even the developers. The in-game paths just don't mesh with the grass or look organic at all. Which is a shame because they were such a revolutionary inclusion. There is an easy fix to this. Make them look more like that. Seriously, if the community can make better looking paths than the creators of the game, there's something wrong. That doesn't happen with Nintendo. But yeah, when the creators make worse paths than the community, there's something terribly wrong. I mean, the, I mean, it's not the only thing wrong. I mean, you're listening to a guy complain about digitized concrete. I do this for fun. Anyway, designing your island does feel clunky, but honestly, aside from designing a better way to put down paths, I enjoy doing things the manual way. Designing the entire island the same way you design the exterior of a house in Happy Home Paradise would be very, very easy and way too godlike. In Home Paradise, it makes sense. In the real game, it does not. Finally, my point about free will in my last video should definitely be brought up here because I have a great idea for it. Maybe the hottest take you'll hear from this video, but I believe villagers should be allowed to leave on their own. Now, before you come at me with the pitchforks, this is not a very Animal Crossing friendly thing to say, I know that. You spend 300,000 Nook Miles tickets to get Bob to live on your island and he's gone the next week. Here's my suggestion. Villagers can only move out if you're not friends with them. The game already has this friendship system where the more you interact and give gifts and do chores, the better friends you become with them. Eventually, they like you so much, they'll give you a picture of themselves as a gift. Narcissistic, but cool. Well, this could totally work for keeping villagers satisfied on your island. I think the perfect way to find out if you're friends with a villager is the gift option in the dialogue options. If there's an option to give a gift, you're friends. If there isn't, you're not. I think maybe you should also be able to see who your friends are through an app on your phone. 
The Nook phone should definitely be used for more social things like this. I mean, there's an app to, like, bend water and land, but there's no app to see your friends. Okay, who designed this phone? Elon Musk? No, I'm not gonna... <laughs> Through this new app, you can see what clothes the villager has, what catchphrases they have, how long they have been in your town, and their friend level related to you. You could also reset a friend level through this app if you wish to move them out, although this should require more than just one button input realistically because you don't want to accidentally change friendship levels and then you have to do the whole thing over again. Maybe you could even change levels through Isabel instead of the app, like how she reprimands villagers for like outfits and sayings. As long as you leave the game when you're friends with every villager, they will not leave no matter how long you go for. And it makes sense really, because if you don't talk to a villager on purpose for like two weeks of playing, they should realistically be like, well, the human doesn't want to talk to me, I should be off. But oh, Dino, what if you customize the villager's home and they leave? Well, first of all, why are you customizing a house that you want to get rid of? But anyway, you know how you have a mobile phone? And you know how ringing people is a big feature of those things? I mean, it even happened back in the 1950s. When a villager moves out, Tom Nook will ring you the second you leave your house in the morning and say, Hey there, Buster, I need help over here. Come to resident services. <coughs> That's uh, another Tom Nook impression. When you get to resident services, Tom will give you the option of saving the house for the next villager or refunding you the money you paid for the house modeling and let the new villager move into their own unique home. This both adds customizability and charm as the game really makes you feel like a resident representative, while also not scamming you out of your money. Wisp Wisp needs revamping. Maybe he can give you a bundle of materials, or maybe when he says he'll give you something expensive, maybe it should actually be expensive. This one has been really heavily suggested, but let us craft items like fishing bait in bulk if we have the right materials. That one was so heavily suggested. Crafting uh, the, the fishing bait is such a chore. The chore part should be the fishing, <laughs> realistically. Have Tortimer's Island produced the old missing fruits, like bananas, mangoes, durians, lychees, etc, etc. Maybe you could even buy them from the shop there, or have the durians out in the back of the island like they did in New Leaf. Uh, they have to bring the old fruit back in some way, I think Tortimer's Island is the best way to do that. Allow us to plant stars to make star trees. If Nintendo really wants us to struggle with these, maybe it will take like one full week for them to grow, and you need to water it each and every day until it grows. Not only are they a nice aesthetic, but they are a much better way of getting multiple star fragments than w standing and wishing for them. I swear I still haven't gotten like half of these star fragments, by the way. There's, there's loads I still haven't gotten. Give us the option to change the daily music from resident services or even an app on the Nook phone. Give us options from the past games while also allowing us to turn it off completely if we wish. Give Digby his own little stand and resident services or even just let him wander around the town. Honestly, just bring him back for the vibes. I mean, him just standing at the back of New Leaf was like the funniest thing because he would be there, wind, rain, or snow. For the love of God, Crazy Red, the, the boat at the back of the place should show up way more often and it should at least have one item you don't have. Like, I am sick of, see, of being happy that he's there and then I go into the back of the ship because I only need like three pieces of art left to finish the art beat and the... the, the I'm not even speaking. There's nothing I need there. This, like at the start, it's good because you can buy all four things there, and oh, that's great. I've some art in the museum. But when it gets to finally completing the museum, it just the stuff you want never shows up. Never shows up. And I have played this game for four years now, and I'm still missing like three pieces of art that I really want. If there's going to be repeats, at least have one item there that you do not have. Like, I get they want you to play the game for a long time, but this is not the way to do it. And finally, make amiibo cards available again. Oh my god. I swear, these things just don't exist anymore. They don't exist in Ireland anyway. I searched the entire island of Ireland from Donegal to Cork and there's like three stores that have them and like none of them have like full like packets of them it's just a single card they're selling that people gave in like before like it's been used before i i am just 
sick of not being able to find any amiibo cards anywhere. I'd have to get them online and then the shipping costs more because they're all coming from the Americas. A collector's edition? Do you know it's, there's an Animal Crossing New Horizons amiibo card collector's edition? Where it has like the, the book? The booklet? I didn't know this. I had to watch a Scott the Was video to find this out. They promoted this. They barely promoted this. Like, I didn't know this was a thing. And I love Animal Crossing. It's my favorite game franchise. So why not promote it a little bit? If I, I, Like, my main news source was Scott the Was. That's how little they actually promoted this. And I went to search for them. Scott the Was was not lying, dude. These things are incredibly hard to find. I mean, they're expensive as hell as well. And it's, again, it's a collector's thing. You know, this shouldn't be exclusive to, like, f f France or something like that. Like, I don't know where all this stuff is. It's all online. Like, Nintendo do not acknowledge this stuff anymore. And that's really sad because I've been getting into collecting more now. And I can't collect this stuff because it's not available in Ireland. And it's barely available online. I think a lot of people know that Nintendo just doesn't give us what we want, even when we are willing to pay for it. And then they get mad when we get it in some other way that isn't through them, even though we can't get it through them. Like, there's no reason these collector's books have been so rare and expensive. They are amiibo cards. This game sold like a billion copies. Why are they not more obtainable? But you know what will take your money for something in return? Me! Yes sir, I have a Patreon and YouTube memberships open as well. I give my deepest thanks to YouTube members ZS and Evan the Cat and my Patreon member Tyrant Link for supporting me through YouTube memberships and Patreon respect <laughs> respectfully. And guess what, you get perks as well. If you press the join button down below, you'll see those for YouTube memberships or you can click the link in the description that will take you to Patreon. Where you'll see all the same thing. It's the same thing, but it depends if you want to pay through Patreon or if you want to pay through YouTube. It's just to give you options. It's the same tiers with the same perks. More information in the description. Go and click to see if it tickles your fancy and uh, thank you for watching. As for me, I'm gonna have a long shower and I'm going to think about other ways a video game that released four years ago let me down. Thank you for watching.